In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a composite photo like this with a little bit of Photoshop magic. Hi, my name is Sean Nisa, and I'm a food photographer and a certified foodie. Yup, you heard that right. Certified foodie. So today I'm actually going to show you how you can go ahead and make some pretty cool composite photos. You know, when you combine photos in Photoshop, so that way you can create this pretty awesome looking single photo. <laughs> Alright, let me grab a little snack because, I don't know, it is a, a food channel, so why not, right? <laughs> And it's actually fairly easy. You know, it's just combining a couple photos, whether it be two or more, and piecing them together with a little bit of masking and um, voila, <laughs> you get a pretty awesome photo. Oh, found my snacks. Let's head to the laptop. Actually, before we get started, let's roll a time lapse so that we can check out how I pretty much set up the whole thing. <laughs> All right. Now that that's done, let's head into Photoshop and Lightroom to go ahead and begin the editing process. All right, so I have Lightroom already loaded and I have my photos uploaded and I curated through them already. Uh, so I selected a few of the ones that I did like. As you saw, I took a test shot so that way I can see you know, where my cup is gonna be um, and some of the props. And then once I laid everything down, I went on and brewed the tea and I placed it pretty much exactly where I uh, placed my set of ones. So that after I took this photo, I went on and took several photos of me dropping the loose leaves. And these are the ones that I selected and I thought I liked the best. And you know what? I think I like this one the best just because I like this natural S-curve looking thing. It, it's kind of nice. It gives a little bit of motion to it. So what I'm gonna do is actually going to select both of these photos by, I'm on a Mac by the way, so I'm gonna use Command um, and select both that one and this one. Right click on them. And I'm going to edit in and then click open as layers in Photoshop. And what that's gonna do, it's going to open up the file in Photoshop as two separate layers um, so that way you don't have to actually open up two separate files and combine them into one file and then create the layers, blah, blah, blah. So it just, it just creates that the whole thing without as much mess. Now we have both photos loaded onto Lightroom. And right now I see I have the T photo at the top. And then if I turn this off with the uh, little eye here, hide that layer. Now I only have my leaf photo. What I want to do is actually move the T photo beneath it so that way the leaf photo is on top and then the T is at the bottom. So one thing to note is when creating a mask, black hides while white reveals. Um, think of it as you're in the shade and there's a light that's shining right and the light is white. It's going to go ahead and show you where you are and what's, what's there. While everything that's in the shadows, is it's black and it's hidden. So. On here, I select that layer because this is the one I want to go ahead and create the mask on. And then if I go to the bottom here, you see this little icon with the square and the circle in it? Go ahead and click that. And what that does is creates a white box right next to your image. And this is the mask layer. So what I'm going to do is I kind of want um, a gradient mask so that way I can have what's on the photo with the T gradually going into the photo with the uh, the falling leaves. And I definitely don't want all this stuff there just because that was just, I don't know, the mess that came with falling of the leaves. <laughs> so let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab the gradient tool right over here. Click that, make sure I'm selected on the mask layer. And then what I'm gonna do is make sure this is black to white and now I'm going to just click on the bottom, drag up, and voila. 
Of course, there's going to be a little bit of cleanup here just because this one kind of looks like it's a ghosty image and we don't want that ghosty look. So now that I see where it is, where I see where the cup is and where the leaves are, I'm going to go ahead and create another mask, or not create another mask, but I'm going to redo the mask. Um, I'm going to drag from here and then move on up to there. Uh, let's go a different gradient. Oh, actually, you know what? I like that gradient. That was actually not too bad. Voila, there you go. Donezo. If I want more of that white, um, if you want to go ahead and refine the mask a little bit more, I would grab the brush tool, which is right over here, the one that looks like a, a paintbrush, or you can press B. And uh, now if I click on the mask layer, so remember, white reveals, black hides. So now I got the brush tool selected and I have the white. And since I'm selected on this layer, if I use anything that's white, it's going to reveal everything on the, um, the falling leaves photo. So if I do this, for example, it's going to start hiding the, the strainer. Let's go ahead and undo that one. And then if I go ahead and press X, it's actually going to swap the black and white on the bottom here. So now you see the black is on top, which is gonna be my paintbrush color. And if I go ahead and click black, it's going to reveal everything on the bottom layer and hide everything on the current layer that I'm on. So let's undo that because I do not want to do that. And what I wanna do is I actually kinda of wanna blend in some of the yellow reflection over here um, with the white from the top layer. So what I'll do is let's go ahead and get white because I want that from here. Let's go ahead and decrease the opacity a little bit. So I'm just doing is clicking and dragging on the opacity and just dragging it down. And then on a Mac, if you press Control and Alt and then click and drag left and right, you can resize it up and or left and right to make it bigger and smaller. And you can drag it up and down to make the edges harder or softer. So I'm gonna go with kind of a softer edge, lighter opacity, and probably about that big. So that way it's more of a gradient as opposed to like a harsh um, paintbrush. And there you go. That's a pretty good photo. Now I have the combined photo of me dropping the loose leaf tea into my tea. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll save that. And then the nice thing about this is once you save it in Photoshop, it automatically imports it into Lightroom under that same folder. So if I swipe over, now I see my composited photo. If you wanna still do any kind of tweaking, you can still do all of your tweaks in Lightroom, such as like, you know, the exposure, uh, the highlights, etc. See, compositing photos wasn't all that bad. It's actually fairly easy to do. It just takes a little bit of work to try to figure out what you wanna hide and how you wanna hide them. So a good thing is to just keep practicing these, take a couple photos, um, layer them together. I mean, this is great for if you wanna get like a nice splash and you capture a splash from one side that you really like, and then you wanted the splash from the other side of another photo. You gotta combine them together to create the perfect splash <laughs> or, you know, like the perfect pour on a pancake. Um, oh, pancakes sounds so good right now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just so many different things that you can do with compositing photos. Also, if you are curious about how I took these action shots, you know, like the pouring of the leaves, or if you want to capture the nice splash, be sure to subscribe because in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can make those splash photos or the action type of photos that really bring your food photos to life. If you do decide to try compositing your photos, be sure to tag me on Instagram so that way I can check them out. And I don't know, I might share a few of my favorite ones. I hope you stick around for the journey and I hope you improve your food photography photos as I teach you what I know. Anyways, I will catch you in the next one. Misa out. No, I need to think of a cool. So, bye.